This past week has been an interesting one for me. I actually got sick a week ago. Don't worry though, I'm fine. But I have been trying to take it easier. Although, honestly, when I look at my output over the past week or so, it doesn't seem like I am taking it easy, does it? But anyways, my point of bringing this all up is this. I didn't actually have any big opinion pieces or planned leaks for this week. But if something interesting caught my eye, I would always be willing to go down a new rabbit hole or do a bit of research. And in truth, I actually have just had a handful of different things of various subjects come across my desk. And the one I want to focus on this week, at least first, is quarter one GPU launches from both AMD and NVIDIA. And in fact, first I want to talk about Navi24. Now, for those who want a refresher, a few leaks came out regarding Navi24's potential specs about half a year ago, and they pointed to a 16 compute unit, just eight work groups with 64-bit interface, you know, probably four gigabytes of RAM then, and 16 megabytes of Infinity Cache. About enough for maybe really low quality 1080p frames with that much Infinity Cache, or, in all honesty, probably 900p or lower gaming is, is what this card was meant for. It's an entry-level card. Although you may be surprised how well 16 megabytes will hold up in 1080p. It won't be great, and it's mostly meant for sub-1080p gaming, but I do want to emphasize that people panned the 6600 XT's 1440p performance and pointed to only having 32 megabytes of infinity cache as being the culprit, but it, it outperformed the 3060 while using less energy despite only being a 128-bit card to the 192-bit 3060. So uh, th that's all I'm saying is I am guessing below 1080p, even if it's just 900p or maybe 1080p at really low settings with no anti-aliasing, I think that 16 megabytes may be just barely enough for that type of entry-level gaming. And I like the idea of it. You know, this isn't a card that I'm really interested in, but I think that, you know, maximum performance 900p or 720p gaming, there's a lot of people that just look for that all around the world, and it could be an excellent MX550 or RTX 3050 competitor. That's how I saw it. Well... <laughs> I just got some info, like I said, regarding Navi24 that has raised some eyebrows. Now, let me go over what these quotes say. Now, these quotes are all from 100% verified sources. I won't say which quote comes from which one, but I, I'm talking about people that gave me the full Alder Lake lineup, release schedules, Raptor Lake, what I had about RDNA 2 months before it came out and has proven correct for the entire rollout all 2021, they, these types of sources, they all said similar things. You know, the first source said that Navi24 is coming quarter one at 120 watts with a single six pin. And another source, Navi24 launching with the XT model in quarter one at 120 watts. And then another source, Navi24 beats the 3050 Ti overall, and it is launching before ARC. What does that tell you? Well, it's probably a card that uses around 100 watts and is coming out in quarter one. So all three of these sources are, you know, people I really trust and are saying similar things. Do, do you see why this information raised my eyebrows? Um, I, I actually put together a chart to kind of make it clear why I have a hard time believing those old specs we saw can give us this level of performance. Let's take a look. All right, so I put together this nifty chart to compare teraflops bandwidth in TDP across Ampere and RDNA 2 cards with similar levels of performance. That way we can kind of level set what we should expect out of a full Navi24 card or some desktop RTX 3050 Ti. All right, so the first thing I got to point out is just how freaking all over the place Ampere is. I mean, if you were to just look at the 3070, for example, a 220 watt card that actually typically outperforms the 6700 XT that is a 230 watt card, you would go... Yeah, wow, even though it's on 8 nanometer, Ampere's more efficient than RDNA 2. Yeah, it, it, this completely falls apart the farther up you go the product stack, where you have massively increasing levels of power consumption for diminishing amounts of extra performance. I mean, you get like not even 10% more performance between the 3080 and 3080 Ti, despite, yeah, about using 10% more energy. And I mean, look how much less energy the 3070 uses here. It, you know... 
most people would blame this high energy usage on GDR6X, and I typically did in the past, but you also got to point out that the 3060 is a lot less efficient than the 6600 series, which I put both on here. I put just the 3060, by the way, because it's in between the 6600 and 6600 XT in performance. But no matter how you dice it, even the 6600 XT uses less energy than the 3060, which does not have GDDR6X. And the 6600 is maybe 5 to 10% weaker while using, well, yeah, like 20 to 30% less energy than the 3060. And again, this doesn't have GDDR6X. So I don't know. Ampere's performance per watt is just all over the place. Only the 3070 is really competitive with RDNA2. And I've even aligned what you would expect out of performance between these cards right here. So, so look at this. RDNA2 lines up somewhat well you know you would expect between relative real world performance and what the tdp is of a 6600 xt again the reason that is very very important is to highlight that if you have a card that uses 120 watts 10 percent less energy roughly than the 6600 i wouldn't expect it to be that much more than 10 percent weaker typically yet the most teraflops I can imagine this having is just shy of around six. And that would only be if this thing is typically boosting to like 2.8, 2.9 gigahertz, which I just find, I just find hard to believe. You see my point then? The RTX 3050 Ti is only on laptop right now, and it underperforms RTX 2060 laptops typically that are using around the same amount of energy. Thus, inferring if we were to bring the RTX 3050 Ti to desktop and clock it higher to try to get as close to a 2060 as we could, yeah, I mean, this should underperform any 120 watt RDNA 2 card. And in fact, if we look at the chart again, yeah, if you just average teraflops and bandwidth up the RDNA2 product stack, it's actually, again, somewhat consistent with a, you know, dart throw of what you should expect the performance to be. RDNA2 scales very, very well with both bandwidth and teraflops up the product stack overall, at least relative to Ampere, which is, again, all over the place. Again, what am I saying? You would assume a 120 watt RDNA2 card would perform, well, only about 10 to 20% worse than a 130 watt, a 6600 RDNA2 card. Yet those specs that were leaked, yeah, that they're just not there. I was actually questioning these specs for a while, but then a fourth source. One of the only people that could confirm to me that of that old leak, the 64 megabytes in the 6600 XT was wrong. It was 32 megabytes. Said that actually, no, as far as he is aware, the Navi 24 specs in that old leak are correct. That it is 16 megabytes of infinity cache. And this was always intended as a sub 75 watt notebook card. But that maybe he believes AMD sees an opening in the sub $200 market that NVIDIA is entirely neglecting, and so maybe they're just pushing it insanely hard, which he wanted to point out to me as well. There are RDNA 2 cards that hit 2.8 gigahertz. You never know. But, well, some people do get their cards to 2.8 gigahertz, and, heck, I had, like, a launch 6800 XT that I got to 2.75 gigahertz just using Wattman, not even doing any fancy overclocking. I said, at stock, though? But then I thought about it. You know, what card is out there clocking the highest right now from AMD? Well, that's 6900 XTX that had some, you know, minor silicon or at least BIOS tweaks after the initial launch to get to higher clock speeds. But it's right now only being sold to OEMs. Well, Navi24 is launching way after the rest of the RDNA 2 lineup. So actually, I don't think it's entirely insane to suggest that maybe... Navi24 has had some more XTX-like tweaks later on in development that are going to allow it to clock higher than you would typically think a stock RDNA 2 card should be able to clock. And in fact, that fourth source also told me that he believes some hardware encoding uh, 
parts of the design have been removed from Navi 24 that you would typically expect in an RDNA 2 card to make the die even smaller, suggesting that no, really, this thing really is meant to be as small as possible and clocked as high as possible potentially for desktop now. That, well, it may have initially been intended to just be some kind of, I don't know, RTX 3050 competitor in Notebook that AMD saw an opening. And, and then I also thought about how these best sources telling me about Navi 24 now most of them are talking to me like this is fairly new information. They haven't been getting Navi24 whispers all the time. That this seems like a recent decision by AMD to have a desktop Navi24 launch. So, yeah, I guess it is kind of all adding up then in my opinion. At the very least, what I'll say is this. What I can 100% confirm is in quarter one, a 120 watt desktop card is planned to be launched with a Navi 24 die from AMD. That's the current plan. I'm sure of that. And that I have another source saying that those initial specs probably haven't changed, or at the very least, that was the planned specs of Navi 24. So only one of two things can be true. Either AMD had some other option, whether a 96-bit version or a 128-bit version of the 16 compute unit model, or AMD has tweaked this thing to clock so freaking fast that they can get to at least 60% the performance or 70% the performance of a 6600 while well, using a die that's half as big. And this is probably the perfect time to launch it if that's what's going on here. You know, if you can make a card with a die size that's half as big as Navi 23 with four gigabytes, it would actually have pretty large margins even in today's shortage full market if you launch this between $150 and $200, and if they really push the clocks, yeah, I guess you could probably get this to around the performance of a 1660. Maybe you could launch a $180 1660 Ti in quarter one and make two of them instead of one Navi 23 and flood the low end right before ARC launches. To me, no matter what the specs end up being, that is what I believe this 120 watt card is going to end up trying to accomplish. And yeah, I guess that's pretty interesting. But speaking of the 6900 XTX and those types of tweaks, it's not the only card that I've heard is probably launching in quarter one if you paid attention to my thumbnail. Yeah, the 3090 Ti or 3090 Super, whatever it's going to be called. Now, this isn't the first time I've talked about it. I've been talking about it in numerous pieces of content over the past few months. This is something Video Guards has been talking about for a while and other leakers have as well. And frankly, I've always been kind of skeptical of some insane 450 watt absurdity launching. Most of my best sources also were like, yeah, it exists right now, but I just can't believe they're going to launch this. Well... Another source got back to me, one that only really confirms things to me when things are basically 100% set in stone. And he's telling me that, yeah, NVIDIA is supposedly planning to launch a 450-watt card in quarter one. To me, this sounds like something that is being prepped by OEMs as a direct competitor to the right now OEM only 6900 XTX liquid-cooled reference AMD card. That's why NVIDIA is launching this. And so I guess what I'm saying is at this point, I'm comfortable saying the 3090 Ti, the 3090 Super, whatever it ends up being called, is 100% planned to be launched. Could it be delayed or canceled? Absolutely. But that seems fairly unlikely now. And that OEMs are preparing to support this ridiculous thing. Is it only going to be for OEMs? Eh, at first, that wouldn't surprise me. But at the same time, I've also been hearing about how the Ampere refreshes in quarter one, half the reason NVIDIA is doing these is so they can basically have an unofficial price increase. Yields are improving, might as well launch greater yield models of all of their lineup and then jack up the price so they can have who knows what they'll charge, a $2,000 3090 Super and then obsolete the 3090. That's kind of what I think Jensen will still do for the do-it-yourself market, especially because he's going to want this to be a do-it-yourself card, so he stops seeing the 6900 XT and XTX sometimes show up on benchmarks for CPUs. He wants to firmly have the performance crown, and it sounds like he's willing to push power consumption by 50% again to add 5 to 10% more performance to the absurd power-consuming GA. 102. And that's the two cards that I'm aware of are seemingly 100% coming in quarter one now. 
But like I've said, there's probably going to be others. And you're going to have to look out for those in my upcoming videos. Like I said, several other whispers have come across my desk this week. So I've got more stuff to talk about. Make sure you subscribe to the Moore's Laws Dead YouTube channel and check that you've ringed the bell button so you don't miss that upcoming content. And also consider, you know, Set, give me a super thanks supporting Moore's Laws Dead sponsors like Ewin Gaming Chairs and others and supporting us on Patreon to get access to the new die shrinks that come out and the other exclusive pieces of content without ads every week. But for everyone else, everyone who's made it this far, as always, thank you for watching. <laughs>